In this video I'm going to show you some of my old work from 28 years ago. It's the story Quap en het Refrigeraat, which I'm going to redraw. And I'm also going to show you how you can improve as an artist. And I'm going over all of the old drawings and I'm going to redraw them. And I'm just going to take you along. So this is the book, Quap en het Refrigeraat, and I'm going to republish it. And it's going to be also in English for the first time. And it's a book from 1994. Uh, it's around the year that I started out as a professional illustrator and comics artist. And in this video, I'm going to show you some of the old work and why I'm going to redraw it. So this is the original book, Quap en het Refrigeraat. And it's going to be called Quap and the Fridge There. I published this in 1994 and was a special edition with some silk print and it is a text comic so that's really um, a Dutch and I think even a European way of making comics. They were made with text underneath and that's because they didn't want children to get lazy while reading comics with balloons. So this is the uh, book. And here I have the originals. Uh, this is some old work I did. Some art by other artists. Here's something by Scott Morse, and here's even an original uh, animation drawing of Albert by Walt Kelly. And here are the originals, and they, I drew them on A3 size, which is 42 centimeters by 29.7 centimeters. And that's four times as big as the original. So this is the first page and here you can see the difference and the half tones were added by someone else uh, with a computer. But I drew everything with um, just normal pencils and I inked everything with a Winter Newton. Uh, with Indian ink and I wanted to republish this and I thought well maybe I can do some some corrections on some of the the pages but when I just looked at it I didn't really like um, the way quote was looking and I'm just gonna go over I scanned all of these original drawings and I have now imported them into Procreate and I've already uh, drew a lot of panels but I'm just gonna go over it and there's just some some problems with um, the shape of his nose it's too flat and there are some other stuff uh, the perspective isn't right and this is what I drew 28 years ago. This is when I just started out as a professional artist. And I drew this pretty fast in 1994. And here I just took a little bit more time and then it's much better. And this is the final page and that's uh, a tribute to Walt Kelly. Because Walt Kelly always you know, drew with Christmas a lot of uh, the characters dancing. So here I have imported um, an old original from 1994 and 
there's just some problems with the inking and also the precision of the characters. Because later on, uh, this is Junior, it's a red robin. And I wanted to make the uh, backgrounds a little bit more with detail. So I'm just gonna add a new layer and make this more transparent. So I'm just going to focus on the red robin. I'm going to use the 6B pencil. And I always like to sketch in blue. It's an old technique uh, I used when I used to draw on paper. Because that's non-repro blue. And I'm just going to add some white here. Just use the rectangle and fill it with white. So I can sketch over it. Just gonna zoom in a little and this is the red robin. And when you uh, create characters or when I create char characters, I always start out with basic shapes. So what I'm first going to do is draw a circle for his head. And, you know, with Procreate, if you hold your pencil, then it will create a circle. And if you want a perfect circle, just press on, on the screen with another finger and then you've created a perfect circle. Otherwise, it will be um, an ellipse. And you can still edit the shape and I'm just going to draw him a little bit bigger and I always use guides for the character's face so that you can place the eyes in a, a similar fashion because if you want to reuse your character these guidelines will help you to uh, keep everything uh, in place any which way you draw the character and he has a sort of a mask on his face he's also wearing some glasses and this sticks out a little and I always place an eye in the middle that's also a guide so that you can place these uh, the two eyes at the same distance. Another way is because you're looking, uh, this eye is bigger than the uh, left eye because it's closer. And it's just gonna look downward He has a little curl on his head. And I'm just gonna draw his mouth and that's a very simple shape. His tongue out. Has a beauty spot around here. And the character is based on someone I know, and that's John Robin. And the character is also a Robin. So now I have drawn his face and, you know, it has a lot more depth to it because I'm using the guidelines. And when I started out doing this comic, I made it very fast. so. The inks aren't accurate as well because sometimes you know when you look at art uh, the sketches look better than the inks and he has a big breast because it is a robin and this is of course a, a caricature of a robin bird
and its wings are hands as well. Just going to sketch the, the overall shape and then fill it in. So here's his thumb, make it a little bit more round. The same happened to Donald Duck in the beginning. You could see that they were just feathers and they the character developed later on and, and then his wings became hands. And here are his feet. And here is his tail. And that's all behind it, but you can, you know, do that when you're inking the character. So here's the sketch of the same bird and it has a lot more character. And just make it a little bit smaller. And in a separate layer, I will do the inks and I created uh, a new brush, which is called the Stave Toner Ink. That's named after uh, Martin Toner. He was a very famous uh, comic artist and he was sort of uh, the Walt Disney of the Netherlands. So on a separate layer, I'm going to do the inks. And it's a very big brush and it's a little bit similar to inking with a brush with a Winter and Newton uh, number one or number two brush, a sable brush. Uh, and just going to lower down the stabilization. And great thing, you know, of with inking uh, digital is that you can undo your inks. And great thing about uh, Procreate is when you hold your pencil on a draw perfect curves, then it will make an arc shape. And you can use that, don't use it too much because it will get a little bit too stiff. What I like to do is work with thick and thin lines. And this canvas is set to, um, just gonna open up the canvas information you look at the dimensions, it's 420 millimeters by 135 millimeters at 600 DPI. And I always like it to be a higher uh, resolution. And then you have a little bit more control over um, the line width. And a lot of the comic artists always draw two times bigger than the, uh, than uh, the comic is is published because then when you shrink it down the line art becomes more crisp and I like it to to keep the the brush very thick because when I really press hard, you see how big the brush is and it has different, you know, when you draw it down, it's uh, thinner and here is, it's thicker. So when you ink, you can get these uh, thick and thin lines. And it gives me the same feeling as I was inking with uh, a Winsor and Newton. So when you press a little bit harder, you get more, 
more ink and you get a thicker line. And you don't really have to press hard. I now want to draw the thumb, but that goes over the head. So what you also can do when you press on the eraser and hold it, it will make the eraser the same brush you're, uh, you're inking with. So now I can erase this part. And draw the thumb. And it's also easier to rotate your canvas to you know, create, because you have a natural curve. When you draw it like this, you, you're limited because I'm just using my uh, wrist as a pivot point. And then it's much easier to ink. This is going way up here. And the thick and thin method is to give more volume to your characters. Mostly on top it's thinner and down below it will get thicker because of the, the shadow. So here's a different kind of looking bird. And that's the way I redrew the entire comic. Just gonna show you some of uh, the things I did. And when you're in the gallery, because these are all the, the comics I drew of Quap and the Refrigerate, when you pinch out, then you can, you know, just do a preview. And here's the same, same Robin Bird. And Quap Hippo. And this is drawn in a very old style um, with text underneath. When you want to work on the file, just double tap it, and then it opens in uh, the work file of Procreate, and then you can work with it. And, you know, this is built up from sketches, the halftone mask, and I will explain that in another video, how to use that, and the inks. I'm just gonna show you the first uh, two comic strips I did. And these are time lapses of the entire drawing. For the comic Quap and the Frigidaire, I wanted to add uh, an extra page, an introduction page. And that's where this little bird, which is called Junior, flies into the valley. In this part, I'm still, you know, testing out the brushes I just made. It's the Stave Toner brush. And I'm also doing some layouts just to find out uh, the right compositions. And that's very rough. And uh, I do it with a very big pencil. And these are just the layouts and just trying out some 
uh, mountainscapes and this is a little bit too much um, western like like it's in Arizona so I need to change the mountains in uh, something more rural and something more European like mountains but I'm just testing out you know the the brushes because you know when you're doing a comic the brushwork it's the final result you will see and this comic will be in black and white and I'm also using half tones and I got my inspiration from Walt Kelly and also from the Tonder Studios and that's Martin Tonder and he also was inspired by the work of Walt Kelly. So I just made a, a quick sketch on paper and imported it into Procreate and now uh, penciling over it. And in this introduction the bird is flying across the screen and he's going to fly um, to the waterfall and that's part of, of the story. Now just getting uh, used to inking with this brush, it's a very big brush and I like to ink with thick and thin lines and in this image the light is coming from the right so everything to the left is darker and in shade. I also got a lot of inspiration from looking at the work of Gustave Doré and he's also a favorite of a lot of um, comics artists. And great thing of you know inking in Procreate or digital is that you can redo it. You can erase things and, and do it again. And here I'm just finding the line in how I want to ink the entire comic. It's all about structure, you know, how do you ink or draw mountains and how do you ink water or a waterfall. And this is of course a time lapse, you can make time lapses in, in Procreate. And I'm also testing out um, the half tones because all of the comics will have half tones, and that's just great, you know, to help uh, with the structure of of the inks. And it's very graphical because there, are, it's it's a very big dot. And what I also wanted to try out is to use sort of engraving. So sometimes I just paint something totally black and then go over it with an eraser. And that's what I'm doing here in, in the water. And sometimes it's better, you know, to ink more slowly and then you will ink faster it's a bit of a contradiction but you know if you want to do something too fast it will get a little bit too sloppy and here I need to find a way between inking more organically that's because I, I made the brush based on inking with uh, a sable brush I used to ink with the Winter and Newton uh, number one and number two sable brush with Indian ink and this brush I created has the same kind of feel. And here's the little bird flying over or into uh, the waterfall. And I'm just looking for ways to ink the waterfall and also the rocks of the mountains.
and the bird I inked on a separate layer. And here I just ink uh, the robin a little bit more uh, graphical. It looks very fast, but this comic strip took me, I think, seven hours to make. Because this is just exploring the style and, you know, this is the basis of all of the other comic strips I'm going to do in the same style. And I wasn't satisfied with the first panel. I found the, uh, the mountains a little bit too repetitive. So I flattened them down and you know, made them into other shapes. The reason why I uh, draw everything, all the pencils in blue, because that's a non-repro blue. And here I just go over uh, the old original and I really like this. This used to be the first page of the comic. And I just wanted to enhance it a little bit more. And make the backgrounds a little bit more detailed. So here is Quap reading uh, a book. And I'm just refining the character and to give the character a little bit more volume. And great thing about you know uh, drawing in procreate or digital is that you can separate uh, pieces so i separated the the book and then later i could uh, put it back in into the sketch and this is the first introduction to the valley where quap lives and i first make a layout and then I go over it again lower down the opacity of a layer and then draw over it again and you know refine the pencils and this is drawn four times as big as the story will be published and a great advantage of that is that the inks will become more crisp when you diminish them. And this is a sequel to The Incredible Tales of Professor Dr. Anton Moll. I've published three books and they're still available on Apple Books. Uh, the first one is An Incredible Tale, then the first Hippo, and the final World Championships. I'll leave links below this video, and there you can find uh, the ebooks. There are enhanced ebooks with also audio. I'm also using some of the brushes I made for the engrave. Uh, brush set but I don't want to overuse them and I also um, tried out so, some watercolors just to see the values and then use that as a base to do the inks 
because when you're inking, uh, they're all gradations of of the environment. And it helps me, you know, to find the right values to ink in. And I've placed the the Robin Bird Junior um, in the foreground, and he is leading uh, the breeder into the story. So that's a, a composition choice I've made. And when you're inking, uh, especially in this old style, you need um, some blacks and whites. And it needs to be a right balance of blacks and whites. Because everything is going to be in black and white. And then, you know, the, the image has to read right. So in this valley, uh, there is a lake, and in the back there is the ocean. And in the middle there is the house of Professor Dr. Anton Moll, which is called Malheim. This book will be published uh, also in English, and the book is called Quap and the Frigidaire and I will publish it at the end of 2022. And also for um, inking the characters, I need to find the right uh, line width. And with these two pages, you no, know, it's the, the beginning of the rest of, of the book. With using the half tones and the cross hatching, you can, you know, uh, create some interesting uh, techniques. I'll also use the eraser, you know, to erase the inks, and that's much easier to do digital than uh, to do it on paper. Then you need to uh, white it out with gouache. In the next video, I will explain how I do the layouts for a comic. And the most important thing about a comic is the story and the illustrations or the, the images need to enhance the story and it needs to be very clear. After that, I'm going to do a video on how to uh, sketch comics in Procreate. And after that, how I'm doing the inks and the use of uh, this ink brush. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to hit that notification bell because each time I upload a new video you get a notification. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles!